Don't pull bark from a birch tree. It will kill it. Did you hear that? Am I doing something wrong? I think my earliest memories of hearing that are in my Cub Scout days where my Scout Master would tell us, don't pull birch bark from a birch tree, it will kill the tree. And more recently, I saw a posting about this in, in a Facebook group that I belong to, someone, you know, scolding the crowd for, for doing this. Now, I don't recommend that you pull birch bark from a birch tree because it, it'll, it'll be unsightly. I've just done a little bit on my own tree, on my own property here. Not that big of a deal, but if you're at a campsite and you do this, the tree is going to look ugly. But will it kill the tree? Let's find out. So what I really want to do today is show you how a tree grows, specifically how it grows out from the center, how the stem gets thicker and thicker as the tree grows. And when we understand what's going on, we'll, uh, we'll have a better understanding if uh, peeling bark will actually kill the tree or not. So most of us will remember from grade school that trees grow a new ring every year. Uh, and that's how you can tell how old the tree is. We can see the rings if I flip it over to this side and probably if I give it a bit of a, a lick, to make it a bit darker. Let's take a look at those rings. So starting in the center of the tree, you have the pith, which is really undifferentiated cells. And out from there, you have the different years of growth. Early in the season, the tree produces large cells known as early wood. And later in the summer and fall, when things slow down, the cells get smaller and their cell walls get thicker. That is known as late wood, and that's what gives you the rings so you can count the age of the tree. So if it's a really good growing season, you've got lots of warmth and lots of moisture, then a tree is going to make lots of early wood and you're going to have nice wide growth rings. If it's not such a good growing year, you're going to have less early wood and therefore very narrow rings. Growth rings tell the story about historic growing conditions. Now, all those cells, in fact, most of the woody part of the tree are made up of xylem cells. Xylem cells, when they're younger and alive, bring water and nutrients up from the roots up into the top part of the tree. Now, most of the xylem cells in your tree are going to be dead, and their only function now is to hold the tree up and provide structure. But that outer in birch, it's probably an outer inch or so um, of xylem cells. Those are still alive, and that's where water is being brought up from uh, the ground up into the top of the tree, and they're bringing uh, nutrients with it as well. This is known as sap wood. So another feature I want to show you here is this dark patch in the middle known as heartwood. Now, heartwood is really just a, a stain. It's, it's the dead cells in the middle um, that have been dead the longest, that tend to get a bit of a stain. Remember, there's minerals in there, and uh, as that ages, it tends to stain. Now, I see heartwood and sapwood get mixed up an awful lot um, in different sources. Where you have heartwood is where you have a stain. The sapwood is on the outer edge and uh, is still alive, and you still have some dead cells uh, between the sapwood and the heartwood. And you know what, the shape of the heartwood does not conform to the growth rings. It, it's not round. I'll show you some samples from my woodshed that, that'll show you that uh, it doesn't conform to a round growth ring. Let me illustrate this a different way. We've got two trees here that are awfully identical, except one has heartwood. Heartwood will show up in the tree. If you cut cross sections, you'll find that it makes a cone shape from the base of the tree up into the trunk. And of course, it also extends down into the roots. And as we just saw in those pictures from my woodshed, that cone is not a nice round shape. It's a very irregular cone. Now, sapwood is very, very different. Sapwood is that living xylem on the outside of the, the trunk and all the branches and the roots. And that, again, is transporting water and minerals up from the roots into the canopy of the tree. Now let's push these trees together and we'll see that the heartwood and sapwood do not touch. In fact, there's quite a bit of space in between that is simply dead xylem that is not sapwood and not heartwood. The xylem cells are really interesting, but we've got some more layers to go here. The next layer of cells out from the xylem is the cambium. This is the layer of cells that, that make new cells, that these cells divide and make new cells. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. And the next layer out from the cambium is the phloem. So the phloem is really interesting. It, it's part of the plumbing system of the tree, just like xylem. Xylem brings water and nutrients up, and phloem brings tree sap up and down. What is tree sap? Well, tree sap is going to be water, but it's also going to include a lot of the carbohydrates that are made in the crown of the tree when the tree is uh, growing in the summer. And it's going to ship those carbohydrates down to the roots for storage. 
those carbohydrates are stored energy. And in the spring, when the tree wants to grow, it's going to want those uh, carbohydrates up out of the roots and up into the crown so that the buds of the tree can have some energy for growth. And in a maple tree, that's essentially where we get maple sap from to make maple sugar. Let's pop back to this diagram for just a sec. So in this diagram, I drew cambium as being two cells thick, and that's not exactly true. Um, cambium is really just one layer thick. Those cells do divide, and for a short period of time, you have two cambial cells, but one of those will uh, specialize. Let me show you. So here's a diagram here of the cambium nestled between the xylem and the phloem. And this is the really interesting part here. The cambium will divide and separate and you'll create two cambium cells. And sometimes that new cell will differentiate and become xylem and grow into a proper xylem cell. This will of course have the effect of pushing the cambium and the phloem out from the center of the tree. Now as you get further out from the center of the tree, you're going to create gaps in the cambium and the cells uh, sometimes divide to fill those gaps and that's what I'm representing here. And as the tree grows, we certainly need more xylem, but we also need more phloem. So every once in a while those cambium cells divide, uh, just like they did for the, the xylem. But every once in a while when the cell division occurs that new cambium cell on the outside of the tree will differentiate into a new phloem cell and that cell will grow to full size. Now all that action done by the cambium is happening right in here a very very narrow single cell strip around uh, the tree and it's making xylem on the inside growing the tree and phloem on the outside. The phloem cells die after a while and get crushed. They don't really accumulate the way xylem does making growth rings. The next layer of cells after the phloem is called the endodermis. The endodermis is one or sometimes two layers of cells that have a very special task of protecting the inside of the tree from fungus and, and other things that, that are trying to get in. And right after the endodermis are some non-specialized cells called cortex cells. Again, they provide a bit of a, a barrier for things entering the tree. So right after the cortex is the cork cambium. And just like the cambium, this is where cell division occurs. Occasionally, it's going to make some interior cells, adding some cortex or endodermis cells. As the tree gets larger, it's going to need a few more of those cells. But the main job of the cork cambium is to create cork cells. And on a birch tree, the cork is all this brown material that you see on the outside uh, of the white xylem. This, uh, this brown material here inside what we call birch bark, this brown material is cork cells. And what it's going to do is provide a bit of a physical barrier for invaders trying to get inside the tree. Um, it's going to basically make the life of a woodpecker a little bit tougher. And the last layer of cells on any tree is known as the epidermis or skin of the tree. And on a birch tree, that's what we think of as birch bark. The last few cells um, are what we refer to as birch bark. Now, as a tree grows, um, it expands. And that epidermis um, has been with the tree ever since it was smaller. And that it's got to go somewhere. Um, it, some of those cells get replaced by the, the cork cambium, but as it gets larger and larger, it has no choice but to crack. And the epidermis simply lets go and starts to peel from the tree. And you see this a lot with other species of trees like ash and maple. Uh, the younger branches or younger stems of a smaller tree are going to be nice and smooth. But as that tree gets bigger, it's going to crack. And that's the same thing that happens with birch trees, except the bark is a little bit different and this bark peels instead of cracking. So will peeling birch bark off of a tree kill the tree? Probably not. You're just removing that very, very outer layer of epidermis, which the tree was in the process of getting rid of anyway. And as long as you haven't removed the cork from the tree, the tree is going to have lots of physical protection. And all the plumbing of the tree, the phloem and the xylem, are inside of that. And they're all intact. So the tree isn't going to die because it doesn't have enough nutrients or moisture. I was out at a popular camping spot recently and saw a lot of really old trees that uh, bark had been peeled from. And, you know, they looked unsightly, but all those trees were alive. So I agree, you shouldn't do that, but it's not because it will kill the tree. It, it's going to make the tree look unsightly, and it's really a form of vandalism at a campsite. 
All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.